My name is Ken Zaffron. I'm an emergency physician. I live in Anchorage, Alaska, but these days, most of my clinical practice is at Stanford, where I go once a month and attend in the emergency department. I am also the associate medical director of the Himalayan Rescue Association, and so I have some experience in high altitude diseases, and uh, that's why I wanted to talk to you, Mel, about uh, is COVID-19 like high altitude pulmonary edema? Is it? No. We're done. You can start. We're done. <laughs> Let's start with that simple uh, concept that you probably learned in medical school but may not remember very well, and that's ventilation perfusion matching in the lungs. Uh, that's V over Q with little dots on top of them, if you see it written. And the reason why that is important is if you put blood flow to areas of the lung that don't have much oxygen, then you're wasting that blood flow and you end up hypoxemic. And that's regulated by hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. So if there's an area of the lung that's full of fluid and doesn't have any oxygen in it, what's going to happen in a normal lung is that the flow will be restricted to that area. The arterioles will vasoconstrict and you'll get your flow going to the places that do have oxygen. So that's the basic concept. And in high altitude pulmonary edema, all of the lung has low oxygen because you're at high altitude and there's less oxygen. And therefore, you get hypoxic pulmonary basic constriction in the whole lung, you get increased pulmonary artery pressure, and that's good up to a point, or not really a problem, but if you get too much, then you start having pressure in the the arterioles, you start getting patchy maldistribution of flow for unknown reasons, and you start getting leaky vessels in the lungs. And that causes pulmonary edema when the fluid leaks out of the vessels. So you get wet lungs, and that's high altitude pulmonary edema. On the other hand, we, we now think that the majority of COVID cases at least start out as type L, there's a paper by Gattinoni from Italy, which describes these two types. It's been pretty widely circulated. And that L stands for low elastance, which I have trouble getting my fingers around that word elastance. But what that really means is high compliance. So the alveolar layer open, the lung opens up. It's not like a closed lung that you would get with a lot of fluid. That would be type H, which is ARDS, which is also seen in 20 to 30% of seriously ill COVID-19 patients. They usually start out as type L, from what I understand, become type H. So type L, high compliance, normal amount of gas in the lung, not much fluid. The lung weight is normal, is what Gattinoni says, but there's not much fluid. If it progresses, it might become type H, which is ARDS, and like HAPE, that's a non-cardiogenic form of pulmonary edema. So there's a lot of fluid in the lungs. And you can ventilate somebody and open up, recruit alveoli, and that'll help them. And this may be why early ventilation of patients with COVID isn't helpful. Because they're type L and their lungs are already open. So it doesn't make much difference. So that... Uh, as I mentioned, 70 to 80% of COVID-19 patients, according to Gattinoni, are the type L. So their lungs are dry, but they have but they have low oxygen. So why do they have low oxygen? Well, nobody knows. That's kind of the $64,000 question. One possibility is that they have a low ventilation perfusion ratio due to the lack of regulation by hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. In other words, that's just not working. So they're sending blood to parts of the lung that have relatively less oxygen. And therefore, they're, they're shunting of blood. It's going through the lungs. It's not getting oxygen. It's coming back to the heart. It's got low oxygen because a lot of the blood went to places where it couldn't pick up any oxygen. Another thought is microvascular uh, problems, uh, possibly microthrombi. Uh, there's a group in Dallas that's looking at that. And one of the supposed 
parallels between hape and COVID is they both have microthrombi. But that's that's probably what some people would call an epiphenomenon. It happens in both. You know, there's only so many things that can happen in your, your lungs. So they can end up looking a lot the same due to different pathophysiology. So we don't really know, but for unknown reasons, people with COVID have low oxygen, but lungs that are open and not much fluid. So that is kind of the basics. Now, the people that are looking at this go, well, we could learn something from high altitude pulmonary edema and treat COVID. But if you treat COVID with what we treat high altitude pulmonary edema with, which is vasodilators, especially ones that work in the lungs, you're likely to increase the shunt, make people worse. Because we're depending on that hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction to maintain our ventilation to perfusion ratios. And if we get rid of that, you're going to be sending a lot of blood to less oxygenated parts of the lung, and you're going to make people worse. Uh, another problem is that a lot of the things we use, uh, mainly nifedipine and uh, phosphodiesterase blockers, are also systemic yeah, basal dilators. So if you give someone nifedipine, you might lower their blood pressure, which in COVID-19 probably wouldn't be a good thing. So again, I don't think COVID-19 is like high altitude pulmonary edema. 